This video will demonstrate how to change the roller covers on a 4 inch wide mini roller. The same procedure can be used for all other widths of the mini roller unit. Before you begin, it would be helpful for you to gather a few tools. We recommend a cordless drill with a 532nd inch hex bit. If a cordless drill isn't available, a standard 532nd inch Allen wrench can be used. A hard plastic tipped hammer and a flat screwdriver. Replacement roller covers can be purchased either with or without end caps already installed. This video shows a procedure for installing replacement roller covers that were purchased without the end caps installed. To begin the disassembly process, use the cordless drill with the 532nd inch hex bit to remove the six 1024 socket head cap screws that hold the top extrusion in place. Be careful not to lose the screws as they will be needed during the reassembly process. Remove the three screws from one side of the unit first and then remove the three screws from the other side. Again, if you don't have a cordless drill and hex bit available, you may complete this step using a standard 532nd inch Allen wrench. To make the removal of the upper extrusion easier, it is recommended that you loosen the socket head cap screws that hold the lower extrusion in place. You do not need to loosen the bolts on both ends of the unit, just the three bolts on one end. Loosen the lower bolts a couple of revolutions, but it is not necessary to remove them completely. You should now be able to grab hold of the upper extrusion and pull it up from between the end plates. Be careful not to knock the flat springs loose that are installed on the inside of the upper extrusion. To remove the old roller assemblies, grab the upper roller stub shaft and dispenser tube and slide them up the end plate slots until you can pull the stub shaft and dispenser tube out of the square hole at the top of each slot. Next, grab the lower roller stub shaft and dispenser tube and remove them in the same manner. There is a coil spring on the stub shaft and dispenser tube. Be sure that these don't fall off while removing these items. Note that the end cap on the lower roller assembly has a magnet installed on one end of the roller. This magnet is used with the roller rotation sensor to send input signals as the roller rotates. The location of the end cap with the magnet is important and will be addressed later in the reassembly process. To remove the end caps from the old roller assembly, insert the tip of a flat screwdriver under the flange of the end cap and pry the end cap off. It may be necessary to pull the roller cover back slightly in order to get the screwdriver behind the flange of the end cap. If the end cap is too tight and can't be pried off easily, insert the tip of the screwdriver under the flange of the end cap and use the hammer to tap the handle end of the screwdriver and knock the end cap off. Once the end caps are removed, the used roller covers can be thrown away. Keep the old end caps so they can be installed on the new roller covers. To install the old end caps onto the new roller covers, hold one side of the end cap in the end of the roller with your finger and gently but firmly tap the other end with the hard plastic tipped hammer. Continue tapping the end cap down until the flange on the end cap is fully seated around the perimeter of the perforated tube. Flip the roller cover over and install the other end cap in the same manner. This process for installing end caps should be repeated for the second new roller cover as well. Now that the end caps have been installed on the new roller covers, note that one of the four end caps has a magnet pressed into it. As mentioned earlier, this magnet is used to trip the roller rotation sensor, which provides an input signal to a Unist SPR2000 control panel. It is important that the roller assembly with the magnet be the lower roller, and that the end cap with the magnet be on the same side of the unit as the M8 tapped sensor hole located on one of the end plates. When installing the new roller assemblies, it is important to verify that the holes in the dispenser tube are facing up. This will prevent any drainage out of the dispenser tube between valve actuations. Once the dispenser tube holes are positioned correctly, insert the dispenser tube through the square hole in the end plate and then into the bearing hole on the roller assembly. Line up the groove in the dispenser tube assembly with the slot in the end plate and hold in place. 
insert the stub shaft through the square hole on the other end plate and into the bearing on the other end of the roller. While holding the dispenser tube assembly and stub shaft, line up the grooves with the end plate slots and slide the assembly down to the bottom of the slot. Repeat the procedure for installing the upper roller assembly. Before reinstalling the upper extrusion, verify that a flat spring is installed on each end of the extrusion. These flat springs apply pressure to the rollers to keep them together during operation. Also verify that both ends of the flat spring are in the same relative extrusion groove. These different grooves allow you to change the amount of pressure on the rollers. It is important that both springs be positioned in the same grooves. Also be sure that the springs are positioned about 60 thousandths from the end of the extrusion. This allows the springs to clear any interferences on the end plates. Install the upper extrusion by inserting the extrusion between the end plates, then gently pushing straight down to compress the flat springs. Push the extrusion down far enough to insert the top socket head cap screw in one side of the unit. The bolt should just be finger tight for now. After the first bolt is installed, rotate the unit around and insert the top socket head cap screw on the other side. Continue inserting the remaining socket head cap screws and tighten all screws with a 5/32nd inch Allen wrench. As a final check, look through the slot in the end plate while you rotate the rollers and verify that the end cap with the magnet is installed on the same side of the unit as the end plate with the M8 tapped sensor hole.